I believe it's really important for women to be a part of the Olympics. Um, and, you know, even when the games were revived in the late uh, 1800s, women weren't allowed as they weren't allowed to participate in the ancient Greek games. And so we've so slowly seen participation rates increase, which is fabulous. And now women have almost, almost equal opportunities uh, to participate in, in the Olympics. And the lessons that young women can learn, women of all ages, from sport participation is really remarkable. And certainly Benita's a fabulous example as a medalist and a wonderful athlete and administrator. I believe that women have benefited greatly from participation in the Olympic Games. I personally have participated um, in just one Olympic Games, but was part of three different teams. We unfortunately boycotted the Games in 80, uh, but I was made the team again in 84, won that gold medal. And from 16 years old, being able to travel internationally and uh, the exposure I got to different cultures and different people, the leadership opportunities that uh, really brought to me as a result, uh, college scholarship and, and degree and, and uh, all kinds of leadership uh, opportunities in sports administration, all as a result of my participation in sport. I also look globally at women who have catapulted their nations as a result of their participation. Uh, Nawal and yes. Wakil and Kathy Freeman from yes. Australia. Nawal was the first Muslim woman to win an Olympic medal and as a result uh, she came home to all kinds of accolades and the, you know, the King of Morocco bestowed all kinds of uh, gifts on her. But she has taken that and she has taken uh, women in the Muslim countries and helped them uh, increase their participation in sport as a result and uh, I see you know again that it's uh, the Olympic Games have have really been a benefit to women globally as well. I believe that women will continue to participate if they're given the opportunity to um, and there are so many exciting things that are happening right now in women's sport for women. We've talked about the lessons for life they can learn through sport and um, Benita mentioned something about um, not being able to go to the Moscow Olympics. And I really think this is important for us to all consider because there's been a lot of talk now about the Sochi Games. Should we boycott? Should we not boycott? Um, and boycotting games, the Olympic Games, only really hurts the athletes. It's so, uh, it's futile. And for a country to decide that athletes, men and women, who have been practicing and participating most of their life, actually 16, you started before 16, right. to not be able to go to have that opportunity to be in the Olympics, it's a shame. And it really doesn't, you know, our boycotts have been about other countries being at war. And it hasn't stopped the war at all when we've done that. So boycotts don't work. And I know there are lots of issues about Sochi and the games and certainly um, that we're all concerned about and aren't happy about, but that doesn't mean our athletes should be penalized for what's going on in another country. The good news about Sochi is that mm -hmm. this is the first time that women will compete in every event on the Olympic program in Sochi. Uh, London, we did as well. We had women's boxing for the first time, and so uh, we don't have every single event identical to the men. In other words, there may be fewer weight categories in certain sports, but uh, we really do. We're covering all the events. Women's ski jumping is being mm -hmm. added to the Olympics for the first time in Sochi. We're so excited about That's that. Great. Our team is strong uh, from the United States. We have some other new events. Uh, events that are coming along that women are participating in. And so as, women, as, as events are being added, they're being added equally for men and women. And we had a larger uh, number of women on the Olympic team in London than we, uh, than we did men for the first time in history. And so well, Title IX is alive and well, uh, having really increased opportunities for people like myself to participate, but also uh, thrive in sport, both at the uh, national level and the world level as well. Well, I think that with the number of women who are participating, the lessons that they learn through sport. Um, we do know that women who have participated in sport have more opportunities. Um, those who have participated at a college level even uh, go on and have more opportunities in business, uh, leadership roles in business. And so this is going to continue, I think, very much to help women in their leadership and also our whole economy. If we only realized that, you know, the women um, could they're much even more important than India and China now with the economy as entrepreneurs, as uh, consumers. And we need to look at the power that women have and how sport can lead them into these chances to become leaders in other areas, not just sport. 
I think that we, we know that women in their communities globally are the ones that are catalysts for change within mm -hmm. those communities. They uh, are ensure that their children get educational opportunities. They uh, ensure that there's food on the table for their families and they create business opportunities. We've got all these microfinancing situations yes. going on. And so I believe that women can be catalysts in their countries for greater opportunity for, for not just the women, but for their children, boys and girls, uh, which increases opportunities and, and elevates the, the status of those individuals uh, more globally. Uh, and, and sport can be a catalyst for that. We have all kinds of organizations now that are bringing you know, soccer balls and volleyballs and all kinds of sport opportunities uh, at the grassroots level globally. And uh, they understand that, that yes. giving those kids an opportunity to play and to, to leverage their talent in a way that, different, even outside the classroom, is, is something that is positive for them and for their nation.